Welcome back to our study in the two letters Paul wrote to Timothy. We're in the first letter, the third chapter, and we've been looking at the qualifications of both ministers in the church and deacons in the church. We discovered that deacons are those who serve more in the tangible realm, the physical needs of people and the congregation and the church at large, whereas the elders, the bishops, the overseers, the fivefold ministers are those who speak more directly to the spiritual concerns and the instruction of the church in biblical and Christ-like ways. So we're going to pick up as we uh, left off in verse uh, <clears throat> 12. Let deacons be husbands of only one wife and good managers of their children and their own household. For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a high standing and great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. Again, reiterating a lot of the same characteristics that are required for those who are in leadership in spiritual qualities, especially that of taking care of their household and having a high, high level of faith and exercising that faith. Verse 14, I am writing these things to you, hoping to come to you before long. But in case I am delayed, I write so that you may know how one ought to conduct himself in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and support of the truth. And of course, we know who the truth is. Verse 16, And by common confession, great is the mystery of godliness. He who was revealed in the flesh was vindicated in the Holy Spirit beheld by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up into glory. And what this is, is a basic creedal confession of who Christ was. And of course it could be elaborated on even more, but he's saying this to them so that they at least get a snapshot picture of it and understand it very clearly. And this is important that we know Christ came in the flesh that he was obviously um, our spiritual savior and by his crucifixion, by his death and by the shedding of his blood and through his burial and his resurrection we have that life and he was vindicated in his death, burial and resurrection to give us spiritual life anew and afresh because we have called on him for forgiveness of sins. And of course he goes on to say we need to proclaim this to the nations. That's the Great Commission. And as we go around the world and as we share our lives with other people, it is how we change our world. And that's important. And we have that reference in Matthew 28 where he tells us, Jesus himself says, go into your world. As you live each day, share the gospel. Make disciples in my name. Well. We'll pick up there and start in chapter 4 in our next session.